we are. Number one, let's see how this goes. Let's talk about the Bible. Let's talk about law and how both of them to come together. Now, let's not get caught up with spelling and everything else like this just yet. L-O-R-E, L-A-W, okay? Legislation, legal, lawful. All of these things have different meanings, different connotations, and different places that they take place in. The objective here today is to talk to you as quickly as possible about a particular verse that I've been told that I need to translate for people out there. Now, whether or not this lands with you or not is, in my opinion, completely irrelevant because it's going to land with somebody. And that's who it needs to land with and not necessarily with you. But if it is you, excellent, keep going. If it's not you, enjoy, have a good laugh, and keep moving on. <laughs> I'm not at all, in any capacity, able to, or am I pretending to, give legal advice in any form, shape, or color, in any way whatsoever, okay? Now, what I'm going to read to you today is verses in between um, me giving a little, a little bit of a narration or a translation in between the verses, okay? Now, some of it is going to be quite direct translation, and some of it is going to be a little bit more of a, okay, we need to put this on hold while I give you another example over here, and then we'll get back to the focus at hand. Hence why I've got my paperwork, so I don't lose track. All right. Buckle up. Here we go. FYI, <clears throat> King James Bible Online dot org forward slash sixteen eleven numbers one six one one underscore Luke hyphen chapter hyphen twelve. For those who wish to read along at home, King James Bible Online Luke. Chapter 12, 1611. Now, the uh, modern translation of it doesn't quite have the aspect of translation that I'm giving you today. It's more mm, worded to express the desired output of the phraseology rather than what is together present. Okay? And when we work in the name of God, or when we work with creativity or source or whatever you want to call it, we think that we're doing something, but there are other things that happen at the same time. Whether we're aware of those or not, as a small example, you might be a painter painting a train station and you say to your brother, hey, how's that? That's a pretty good looking train station. And your brother goes, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, but you see in that wall there, in the back of the train that you've got? Did you paint that smiley face or is that an accident? And you go, oh my God, the way that I was marking my brushes as I was trying to paint a flat white wall, the back of the train just so happens to have painted out and shaped a smiley face. <gasps> Small example. Now, chapter 12, verse 1. In the, I love the the um the actual wording and the spelling of sixteen eleven. Keep in mind, if you do look up the spelling for this, they didn't use V back in those days. They substituted it with a U. I'll give you an example when I come across it. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye the league of the Pharisees, which are hypocritical, or locked in hypocrisy, which is hypocrisy, is the actual term. However, what he's saying here, or what the verse is saying here, is quite simply, those to which we're referring to the Pharisees are loaded with hypocrisy. Now, if you don't know who the Pharisees and the Sadducees are, that's a very long discussion. Needless to say, they were two groups of people who were heavily invested 
in the direction that law was taking at the point. And so they were deliberately trying to obfuscate and create an elitist scenario in the environment so that way they could take law for themselves rather than to leave it dismembered, uh, dis amongst the normal people, right? For there is nothing covered, verse 2, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Known, yes, K-N-O-W-E-N, -E known. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Now, this is an interesting one because um, it goes on to quite simply say that you can't hide anything and anything that you do hide will be revealed sooner or later. Now, this can be disputed by some people to say, well, you know, this is true, but in the instance of, say, my grandpa who committed a crime, he died, and while the truth came out after he was passed away, he still didn't have to stand guilty or take responsibility for the things that he did do. But keep in mind, that's our limited perception of a constructed ego at the forefront of our conceptual army identifying itself as the point of existence. What we call our person. Keep in mind, in the eyes of creation, or in the eyes of God, nothing is hidden and everything is seen. Three, therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and what ye and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. This I find poetic because, as you would know, if you work in a government department and you've been caught using telecommunication services that you thought were safe, as many of them have as being revealed in public around the world at the moment. We have people here who think that they're whispering in closed closets behind dark corners, metaphorically speaking, using digital technology rather than actually meeting up in closets and going and then having to deal with maids eavesdropping, right? Now you've only got to deal with the fact that everything online is not secure. Even crypto blockchain can be hacked. The amount of hacking and coordination that needs to take place is at a scale that most people will say is utterly impossible, but the fact remains, it can still happen. And that's where we've been caught up previously, where we overestimate an, assumption, an assumptive position based upon the, usually the odds Oh, it's a one in a billion chance it's going to happen. It's okay. I'll just do it anyway. Nobody's going to know. And it turns out that one in a billion chance is the one that actuates and people do find out the truth. Yeah, I'm sure that's an absolute accident. Right? And I say unto you, my friends, for be not afraid of them that kill the body Guards, sorry, I've got some edits here that I was just starting to read. So, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. All right? So, be not afraid of them that kill the body. So, anybody who can inflict you harm or do physical harm to your body or can kill you is not somebody that you need to be afraid of. In fact, this goes on to say... But I forewarn you whom you shall fear. So the people that you do need to fear. Fear him which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now with a little bit of mm, guidance here, we can see what's actually being said. Now. This will test you all as to how good my translation is. Not my direct translation as in I'm translating words from one dictionary to another, but I'm translating it as in putting it into a much better scenario for you to get the understanding that is trying to be put through here. 
let me put it like this fear him which after he hath killed fear him that after you've killed him is the one that can come back and cast you into hell fear him that after you've killed him can come back and cast you into hell the previous one goes on to say be not afraid of them that kill of the body and after have no more that they can do this is where we start to get a little bit weird and off track a little bit so what this is saying pretty clearly is if you understand what's going on in terms of reality in terms of commerce in terms of law in terms of spirit and all of this sort of stuff then what you can do after you've been murdered is a lot including the punishment or reprimand of the murderer that terminated you quickly or unexpectedly especially if they've done something transgressive as they've done that to you because if they've done something transgressive as well as they've done that to you then they're not only in a position where they're making a debt with you that you can then come back to them with as a claim even in the spirit realm after you've left your body you can still do this if you choose to or you could then just move on and allow the universe to play its course because it's the one with the largest tally sheet and i'm not trying to say that there is an accounting or there will be a judgment at the end of it all we're the ones that do the judging right we're the ones that are currently in the process of it all if you want more information on that i would suggest on the judgment aspect i would suggest uh, conversations with god or it's a fantastic place for that point six and not five sparrows sold for two farthings are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before god this i find very interesting but i think that this is alluding to the fact that transparency in commerce is utterly imperative it doesn't matter how much you sell something for it doesn't matter what you buy or what you sell all of these things not one of them be forgotten before god and i think that this is what this is really saying is pointing to taxes duties impositions holds all of these exercises all of these things are ways in which people are claiming authority over something and they're usually doing so through obfuscation of numbers or through fraudulent practices and i can get into more of that as we go on further into the discussions about this sort of stuff not today however it's apparent to me that this statement here says very loudly and clearly all is accounted for in the open and transparency is key right if you're not playing the game fairly and openly then well you've got a settled you've got a score to settle with the man of the house or the woman of the house or the it of the house or however you term it you'll have to answer to your creator as the case may be seven seven but even the very hairs on your head are all numbered fear not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows yeah in case you weren't aware you're much more valuable than a sparrow that is to say even if you're not taking account of yourself your pricelessness is written in the stars so to speak you need not hold account these are taken care of for you okay so you don't need to try to count the amount of hairs on your head and to know what your account is all you need to do is focus on maintaining your account being impeccable with your business as such then your accounts are all in a fair and you need not hire somebody to micromanage and balance books because that's where you start taking something from somewhere and moving it over to somewhere else and then we're talking about violations of free will and uh separating oneself for others inappropriate inappropriately also i say unto you eight also i say unto you 
Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Now let's go and do a little bit of a sidestep here. Okay, so the Son of Man is where we talk a little bit more appropriately about religion and the different translations of it. In this particular context, we're going to refer to the Son of Man as the actual Son. Okay, the Son that is looking over man. Okay, and as such, if we go somewhere like uh, the Law of One material, you can see very quickly the consciousness stems from points of energetic radiance, what we refer to as stars or logos. The logos are these stars and the stars then set the parameters or the environment on the crib or the play area where they're cultivating little babies of life. That little crib or play area just so happens to be the planet Earth. So the sun is without getting into a religious concept of oh or worship the sun this is not what we're doing here what we're doing is we're simply recognizing the circumstances to what it is every single tree every single body every single insect every single animal every single everything in this planet is measured in a coordinated structure in a relationship of a, this whole circumstance that we find ourselves in the crib in relation to the sun okay so the crib has to be positioned a certain distance away from the heater, so that way the crib doesn't catch fire, right? It can't be too far away or it'll get cold. This is called the fine-tuning problem in physics. That is, there's a lot of parameters around here that define a human. Let me give one as a very specific example. Why is it that women give birth the way that they do? And the many circumstances, some people say, because of the way in which gravity or whatever that is, as well as other forces on the planet, have applied themselves over the evolution of the human being. So the size and the pattern and the curve of your spine, right, is directly in alignment with the amount of pressure, downward pressure, that is exerted on your body. If we were further away from the sun, we'd be taller. If we were closer to the sun, we'd be shorter because of the different pressures put upon the structure of our body. So with that aside, the sun and the temperature of the sun and the other mag uh, electromagnetics of the sun, uh, X-rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays, all the rest of them, all of these things define the shape and the style of life on this planet. Okay. As such, the ones that it doesn't directly control are controlled by the planet, and as it turns out, the sun controls the planet, and then the planet controls us. The same way as our cells are made specifically to fit inside of us, right? We are designed to fit, to spit, to fit directly inside of this thing that we call a solar system, commonly referred to as. So. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Now, this is not saying that you need to go out into the street and say to your neighbours, Hey, I now believe in Jesus Christ and I'm a born-again Christian. You can now worship me as a better person. This is not what it's saying. What it's saying, quite simply, is if you can connect with and work with actually the point of creation then that point of creation will also work with you that point of creation will speak to the other parts of creation and then instruct them to accord in your duty as the word or as the acting word of god as the case may be so I'll put it another way, there's a saying that goes around the spiritual communities. If you are where you are and doing what you need to be doing exactly at the right time, then the universe will conspire with you, right? That's what we're saying here. If you can communicate with the natural source point of creation, then 
all of creation will conspire with you, not against you, right? This is how we manufacture good luck. This is how you manufacture manifesting. This is how you manufa manufacture your desired outcome. This is how you change your future, okay? You choose to do so, and then you go about setting about the circumstances in order to change that future depending upon the variables that you're dealing with. All of this is done from within you, okay? But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Okay, there's another saying here that comes from the Bible, and I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I didn't write it down word for word. It goes along the lines of, if you bring forth that which is within you, it'll save you. If you do not bring forth that which is within you, it will destroy you. Okay, or it will be your undoing or something. If you bring forth that which is within you, if you can tap into the source of creation, the point of existence inside of you, and you bring that forth from within you, no matter where you bring that forth, it's going to have good results. But if you don't do that, then you're piloting under what we commonly refer to in the spiritual community as running on your ego, trying to artificially come up with something for the wrong reasons. And the wrong reasons are basically wrong in a relative sense because <clears throat> if it's what you're trying to do congratulations you're succeeding it's not wrong what i mean by wrong is if we are like i do trying to align ourselves with the highest amount of service for the highest amount of good in order to be able to help humanity grow and expand and to provide a better future for our children and the next generations that's what I think is good and the direction that I consider to be good. If it's going in the opposite direction to that, then that's what I would call wrong or bad. I'm not saying that something is wrong. I'm not saying that something is bad. I'm saying in relation to my perspective, that's wrong and that's right, right? That's my opinion. That's not empirical fact, okay? However, if what you're trying to do is be all that you can be, then what you've got inside of you is what will save you. And if you bring that forward, if you have the courage to stand up in front of anybody and say, the deepest part of me is here, and it's going to be as fantastic as it's going to be, whether that's passionate, whether that's happy, whether that's excited, whether that's radiant, whether that's whatever, okay? Your soul point of creation, when you're on fire with that point of creation, your radiance is sometimes offensive to some people if you're not prepared for it. That doesn't mean that you should dim your radiance either, okay? But point eight goes on to say, just to tie it back into where we were, whosoever shall confess me before men, shall the Son of Man also confess before angels of God. You do not stand up in front of anybody and you say, I confess myself to be a Christian. Okay? That is not standing up. This is standing. You're standing in here. Not you're standing with your feet. Okay? So if you can stand up in front of men and say... All I do is I speak the truth. Then you will. Okay? If you stand up before men and you deny this and you say, well, actually, this, that, and that, and that, and you craft a story, you lie. Sorry, you don't lie. You omit some truth or you cultivate something to paint a certain picture or you sell an item. Selling is lying, okay? If you misrepresent something to serve an acquired agenda, that is the opposite of what I'm talking about here. That is what will destroy you. That is trying to take something from out here and saying this has as much power as creation itself. No, that is not the way that we do things. That is how 
we fall into things like covet, covet, you know, covetousness, covetousness. <laughs> oh boy, I tried to practice the word before I got on covetousness, covet, covetousness, covetousness, something like that. Anyway, we'll come to that again as in a comical way. So, point eight and point nine are quite simply saying. If you do not bring forth that from which in you it will be your demise. That if you do not bring forth the alignment with the energies of the universe, then your biology, to put it quite simply, has no other way to get reboosted or respun. And slowly your mitochondria and your telomeres stay wilted and tilted off angle, slowly running with more entropy until that inbuilt destruction is manifest as the death of that point of creation. Now, death is just a slowing down and a ceasing. It is not the termination and the end of something. It continues on in different forms and different shapes. However, if you wanted to keep yourself here with your physical body, this is something you want to pay attention to. As you spin or as you interact with this divine energy from within you, your biology literally picks up and charges with parts of this, what we refer to as units of space-time, okay, the fabric of space. This is what you are made up of, okay? You might think that you're sitting in a field of space. Actually, you're made up of space. Every single cell, every part of this thing inside of you, all of this, whether that's in hair, in bone, in heart, in toe, doesn't matter. Every part of you is broken down and made up of increments of the universe. Okay, you are a product of space, what we commonly refer to as space. But space is something that is infinitely dense, full of infinite potential. And the potentials that you're manifesting out of that infinite potential are what we're talking about here and how to cultivate those potentials. You can have more, not control, but more say over what types of manifestations you're going to express if you choose to adopt a more aware perspective of these things. If you choose to run around the place going, I know nothing, I know nothing, then, well, you know, it says it quite simply as one of the very first axioms in law. Um, Let he who chooseth to knoweth nothing, knoweth nothing, or something similar to that effect. If you wish to be ignorant, then that's your desire. Ignorance, otherwise, is no excuse. Okay? That is fact. If you do not know... You cannot blame anybody else. It is your fault for not knowing. You can be agitated and frustrated that you've been deceived. This is true. But why is it that you've not corrected yourself until now? Is it because of somebody else? No, it's because of you. You're the choice that is the deciding factor upon everything that you are. And to stress this point, I'll simply say, to tie it off, if somebody was to say to me that they have no choice in breathing, right? I have no choice in some things like breathing. I do it automatically. Actually, the choices that you make in deciding to continue to live say that you don't want to breathe, that you have to breathe. Because of your decision to live, Breathing is now a consequence. So because of this decision here, other decisions are made automatically. But if you were to turn around and say, well, I don't want to live anymore, you'd say, I don't want to breathe anymore. Do you see? The common example is usually with gun to the head. This one just paints that picture a little bit more obviously with less outside influence. It's totally up to your choice then. You can choose whether to pull the trigger or not. It doesn't change over the fact as to whether or not you've got control. You've still got control, right, of your perspective. 
not of what's happening of your perspective you can't control whether somebody is going to hold a gun against your head variably you can in a larger sense again in a larger sense that is appropriate but more for the point of conversation i think we've reached the desired outcome here this goes on to say even more so if you about the bring it from within do not bring it from within number 10 and whosoever shall speak a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but unto him that blasphemeth against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven this i found rather interesting because um just a quick note and this is why you will not find in court insults about the belief in the lord despite the desire to be based in fact it's okay to suggest this to a man this or that but try to imply to creation itself and you better know when and how it's going to start falling apart it's just a couple of notes i took now whosoever speaketh word against the son of man we're talking about it's actually spelt in the same way that i defined it a moment ago as the son but I don't know so much. So if you speak words against the Son of Man, that's okay. But if you blaspheme, ah, oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm just sitting here and I'm deliberately asking it internally to show me what I'm missing. And that's how I translate these things. Okay, you go to anybody who reads scripture and they'll say exactly the same thing. They'll read it. And then they'll say, God, show me what it says or show me what I need to know. And it will come out of the page and land in your head. It's not like you're piecing together words back here. It's more like <laughs> and it jumps into you and you're like, oh, that's what I was looking for. So what just happened with that is um, who shall, whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. As in to say, you can say all the words you want. Okay, words are relatively empty and hollow. But if you act on any of those words, or you judge on any of those words, or you persecute on any of those words, and they're not true, it will not be forgiven. Okay? So this, I think, is more insinuating as to the beings who hold offices or states of office okay i say that very deliberately states of office because people who hold office are their own state at the same time in a way not the same state as in a body of land mass although what we commonly refer to as real estate is not actually uh, a land title okay uh, title to land or, or land patent real estate that's a different discussion for another video to be better for you to think of it like real e state right think of email energy mail e state is referring to your estate your energetic state in a way now this is relevant because as you walk into these places, as we're going to go into, this is where it starts to get really obvious. Number 10, one more time. Whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. So you can say whatever you want, because usually when you're saying something, it's in ignorance. And if you're doing it in ignorance, you have that claim of saying, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I was an idiot. Now I do know, and I do know better. And so since I've learned, I'm now apologizing. I'm now making um, repentance for my sins, as the scriptures describe. Now, number 11, ah, oh, yeah, sorry, but then to blasphemeth is to actually do wrong, is to say wrong with intent, is to do wrong with intent, is whatever, but that's where it's wrong, is when you're actually doing it wrong with awareness, right? Because him that blasphemeth is an accurate statement, not an open statement. So it's him that blasphemeth. So him that tries to blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost. So you have to have awareness that you're doing that. 
Now this is the big one that I wanted to do around this whole video here, the focus point of the entire video. Number 11. This is pretty epic, this verse here, but I'm going to pair it up with number 12. I'll separate them so you know the difference between them, and then I'll go into the translation. Number 11 is, and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what ye shall answer or what ye shall say. 12. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Interesting. So as you go into judges, magistrates, courts, synagogues, places of um, these places, <laughs> I couldn't think of a, a polite word, <laughs> as you go into these places, clean and clear your mind of all fears and judgments and be the pre-sent moment. In doing so, Spirit will offer you from your memory and preparations anything that you need at any point to cause the events to collapse into the potentials that you're observing in your heart. Now, most people are aware of the double slit experiment, the idea that you can collapse reality into a potential. This is not to say that you collapse reality into physical matter because physical matter is a dream and has been since debunked. That's what the whole field and in study of quantum mechanics and larger sciences is all about, is the realization that we live in an energetic reality, not in a separate material universe where things just kind of float off and die and disappear into nothing. What we do and what we are and where we are is in something that is integrally aware of what's going on. Okay, whether you consider that to be God or creation or mind, like if you're alchemical, you, then you view the universe like mind. So we're all part of this one great thought. If you're thinking law of one, it says exactly the same thing in the first sessions of it. For we're all the dancing thoughts within a thought, right? So this is what we're doing here is we're playing with energies. Now, when they bring you onto these synagogues and magistrates, and they push you out into the gangplank of the scenario where you're standing in the middle of a group of people and they're all standing there about ready to judge you with their gamels and their persecuting documents and everything else like this. That is exactly the point in time where you do not want to be smart. You do not want to be clever. I'm going to find the word smart for a grander image of what I'm trying to paint here. Smart and clever are trying to manipulate information rather than bearing witness to the truth at hand. Now, if you wish to bear witness to the truth at hand, then the light of creation is exactly what you want because that cannot be um, moved against. Truth is standing fact in its own right. And so it cannot have any doubt put forward to it it's like trying to put a shadow against a match. Can you imagine that? Having a match and then trying to go, okay, let me get a shadow right in there against that flame. Not going to happen. Just is impossible. Okay. Now, you can distort my words and play around with them as much as you want. And that is bringing the shadow in through manipulation of what the light actually is. And there's all sorts of ways that we do that. And there is all sorts of ways that they do do that in law. And that's partially the reason why we're going to start talking more about how translations are very important across the materials that we're provided with in our society. I just so happen to do a lot of reading in law, have done for a long time. I do a lot of reading in occult material and spirituality. I'm a big reader and purporter of the law of one because I believe everybody is created equal and that love is the governing force that is navigating this reality and I see that in unified physics and the studies that I do there through quantum mechanics quantum biology and all the rest of it that I look into it's absolutely wonderful now this particular part here is an encapsulation or an active active part of that philosophical cosmology cosmological approach what it's saying here quite simply is if you try to stand up in court as a person you're going to fail every single time. Maybe not every single time. You might get some good deals every now and then. You might walk away with the parking ticket off to the side, whatever. If you stand up in court 
as the If you can stand in court and emit as much light as a witness as comparably Jesus did. Now, I'm not saying that you're comparable to Jesus. I'm saying that if you stand up in the light of God in truth and honor, then that is basically what Jesus was doing. And so then your truth is no longer your truth. It's God's truth. And so because it's God's truth, it's the same truth that Jesus was saying. And so then they're comparable. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to put you on a pedestal there, even though you already are. I don't need to put you on a pedestal. That's not what this is about. If I was going to put you on a pedestal, I'd put me on a pedestal as well as the rest of humanity as I have been this whole entire conversation, just without the ego attachment. Now, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Now, when you do have a court case or something that you're developing for, there's a lot of research and a lot of material you've got to go through. You've got to know what you're standing for. You've got to know what laws you've broken. You've got to know this and that and how to come about it all. But as you do all your research, don't think about writing a script, like a movie script of exactly what's going to happen in the court case. Because if you walk into the court case and you've got, the judge will ask me my name. And then the judge goes, and who are you? And you go, he didn't ask me my name, but he asked me who I am. That's your script gone out the window and your mind is already lost. You're already caught up in a storm of uncertainty and doubt because of how you set yourself up. Do your research, plan your court case, have an idea, do all that you can. But when the time comes and you're standing as a witness, do not rely on external things to be your witness. Instead, put these things aside, stand up confidently in the light of creation as you take a stand and say, that I am and as I am that is and as it is so it be and that is all that there is nothing more and nothing less and that is fact nothing can be said against that right doubt uncertainty questions about angles or deceptive practices about your capacity, all of these things are designed to bring you out of that present moment, okay? So as you're doing all of the research, you're packaging it up and you're sending all of these ideas to your memory, then when you're in the moment and you don't have any, any obstructions and the judge says to you, how fast can a zebra run? Your mind will go... <gasps> And here it is. And it'll bring forth the memory that you need. As long as you can stop yourself going, what's he asking me about a zebra for? Right? Get out of your own way. Stop thinking and let yourself be. And as you are, that point of creation comes through you because that's what and who you are. Okay? Our free will is the ability to pretend like we're not the universe. You can pretend like you're separate from everybody else and you can go and hurt anybody else. But the reality is you are connected, that we are all one. That's the truth of the matter in so many different ways, not in a physical way, not in a digital way. Okay. Number 13, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And this one I particularly just chucked in because it's a good example of how they twist things, right? So we've just stated that everyone is equal in the eyes of God um, as you go into the house of rectitude and, and balancing. Don't go in with an agenda, right? Just be present. And so then some smart ass comes up and goes, oh, what about under this circumstance? And so we like that because that's where we get to show how obvious this is 
across the spectrum. It doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter whether you're coming from the left or the right, it still remains the same. Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Okay? Number 14. And he said unto him, man, who made me judge or a divider over you? Who made me the one that I can cut you down the middle and separate you in two? Because that's what I would have to do for your two children. If they were having a dispute over you, and you put me in charge, I'd go down the middle. Alrighty, here you go. See you later. Have a good day. No, that's not our job. That's not a judge's job. Okay, nobody is here to cast judgment like that. It's much more appropriate and much more apt to move forward rather than backwards. Under these sort of circumstances, that's where we start to experience things that we usually talk about in terms of sins that get distorted over that. However, before I jump ahead, that was number 14. And he said unto him, man, who made, who made me a judge or a divider over you? I've got no more rights than you do. You've got no more rights than he does. I can't force him to cut his stuff in two and give you half, right? I'm not here to cast judgment on who of you deserves or has more right. Pretty good point. And then he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And that's where we get to the focus of this particular question or parable, which is talking about how, what about all of the stuff that we work together with? I was working together with him on his farm, and he said that he would give me half. He's not giving me half. Take half of his and give it to me for me. Right? Nobody can do that for you. If that's suitable for you to do for some reason, then do it. I'm not giving you encouragement or permission to go and commit a crime. I'm using a thought example, an experiment, a thought experiment with you. Now, Take, and then he said unto them, Take heed and beware covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. possesseth. Don't forget that you dabble in matters of spirit. Do not fall to the covetousness, covetousness of your brother's things, for you have an unlimited supply of things to which you are being discussed. And if you don't, then it's likely that it's not for you. I can't remember the exact scriptures, but there's plenty of scriptures out there that say things along the lines of, and all you need to do is ask, and before you even ask, it is already given unto you. You live in an energetic reality, which means that there's no running out of anything. The only thing that's running out is your capacity to be able to interact with this energetic system. This energetic system is self-renewing and perpetuating, as it's shown in many different ways. Take a look at a single piece of your mitochondria, that thing alone is like an over-energy unit itself, okay? Now, without going into the details of quantum biology and the rest of that to talk about that, needless to say, anything that you are and everything that you desire to be is either one coming from the point of creation, and in which case you're going to be getting it in its full order, or... It's coming from something you've seen somebody else have and you've decided up here that that's what you're going to do and that's what you're going to have. Maybe you need a reality check for that, in which case the reality is not going to let you do that until you come back to the first point, which is I need to first know thyself, know myself, before I can know how I'm going to interact with this world around me. If I think that I... Uh, Quick example, if I think that the universe is a cold, dark, and lonely place that ends up in nothing, then I think that me cheating somebody out of $50 is not a big deal. But if I live in an energetic universe where everything is connected, and they are also me, then, well, 
that $50 is being stolen from myself and all that I'm doing is I'm making the grander issues that I have more perpetuating and further prolonging them into the future. Instead, be present where you are right now with what you're doing. Be focused on channeling that energy inside of you to that source point of creation. And then from there, you will see all of reality dance and sing along in tune and harmony with you. You're the maestro. You're the conductor. You get to decide what sort of symphony that is going on here. You're an instrument. You have the capacity to be able to sing, dance and create music in ways that you can't even imagine. Do you think that the bird knows how wonderful its song is in the, in the morning? Some people don't like bird song. I do, right? Some people consider them to be very annoying. Still, the example stands. If you think that you can see all of what you are without any help from external things, then let me rephrase that. You're not likely to see the full extent of your song that you're singing because you've only got a limited range of sense perception. Reality, though, hears and dances with your song when it's in tune with the orchestra of reality. When you can get your point in tune with these other harmonies, then miracles actually happen. Magic happens. Reality changes. Things that can't be explained become normal. Odds and statistics become irrelevant. It's amazing stuff. And it's things that can be taught and learned. Not up here. Through the whole being through the whole point of creation. That's what you are. Excuse the funny light play. This is what I have for you today. What we've just done is had a look at some very interesting scriptures to talk about how things might play out in the world of law in a way that we previously might not have been aware of. This is more so to do with the commercial aspects of law rather than the religious aspects of Bible and scripture. The whole entire Bible is the stem of our society. Whether we are practicing Christians or not, the people who created this whole thing and the people who set it all up were. And they definitely have a very big interest in keeping it heading in that direction using that language. Hence why believing in God is not classified as a delusion, okay? Not an imaginary concept, not a figment of your imagination. It's considered, not considered fact, but considered in this grey land zone where, okay, it kind of is, but it isn't, uh, we'll just leave it as it is, all right? The reason why that's still there is because of how fundamental the entire Bible is for the entire establishment that we call commercial instruments in law. Commercial liability, the UCC1, all of these things are becoming a lot more aware now and there's more people like myself who are going to start talking a lot more about this as we're being told to and pushed to do so. We're being pushed from all over the place, not just people, but also our spirits of creation, our connections with source, our connections with the creator. All we are doing is serving. I'm not here, again, to provide you with any legal advice. I'm not here to tell you about what you can or cannot believe in. This is all your fantastic capacity to be able to believe whatever you want. But remember, be living a lie or be leaving behind something that is no longer appropriate. There are many different ways to be able to look at how words come together and how to spell different points of creation using these instruments that you have. 
particularly this one here, the vocal box, is a wonderful instrument. And you can use its capacity, even if you're not using words. Humming, tunes, vibrating. Vocal box exercise is fantastic. All you need to do is hold a baby or an animal and play with your voice box, and you'll find very quickly that it has magic in it. These things will respond to your voice box in a way that will make you go, wow, that's really cool. Okay, that'll do for today. I hope it's given you something to think about, something to look at, something to have a chat about. Look forward to seeing some of the comments that I get back about this. And um, yeah, if you'd like any more information, just let me know. Like I said at the start, King James Bible Online, I was getting it from the 1611 version of the KJB Bible. Uh, so yeah, you can access the website for that. It's freely available. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing today. I really send you the best tidings for how it all comes together. Now, my hand positions have nothing to do with any international organization. These are my hand signals based upon my energetic workings. I work with the Star of David in various aspects. I work with all sorts of connections to and from spirit. These are called mudras. Okay? Look them up. I love you. I love you all. It's the reason why I'm here. It's the reason why I'm putting myself out in front of you. Not to make myself seem cool, not to become popular, but because I hope that your life becomes better in any capacity through what I'm doing here for you today, in any way whatsoever. As I know it will for some, not for others, and that's perfectly okay as well. In the light of the one infinite creator, thank you very much for coming. Enjoy your day.